The experiments you will see have been carefully done by professionals and should not be tried at home without parental guidance. Please follow the caution signs throughout this program. about our creator through fun and exciting experiments. I am excited to see what you have in store for us. I don't see anything on the set. Do we have to go outside? Yeah, I think we'll get better because it's gonna be messy. Oh boy, but let me introduce <laughs> my crew over here. We have, of course, Professor Roy, and we have Nathan, uh, Hi, Nathan. Hannah, Hi, Hannah, Yana, and Ethan, right? Are you ready? Hey, yeah. You what guys. are we doing today? Well, you know, it's a neat science experiment, and most everybody's seen this before, and it's called the Mentos and Soda Pop experiment. Have oh. you ever seen that or heard about it? Yeah, I've, I've done seen it. it. Yeah. Well, let me ask you a quick question. Do you think it's a chemical reaction is why it happens, or yes. do you think it's a physical reaction? What do you think? Uh, chemical reaction. I think physical. so, too. Uh -huh. well, let's go test that out. Well, we're going to find out. All right, let's, let's go. Are you ready? Yeah. All right, let's go find out. Time, join us. Let's go. It's a beautiful day and we're outside, so uh, we're ready. Are you ready, Professor Roy? We're ready. We're ready. Yay. We're ready. Looks like we got some drinks, right? Yeah. That's yeah. interesting. Here, feel that. Feel how, how tight. Is that tight and hard? Yeah. Is that tight and hard? Is this yeah. tight and hard? Okay, yeah. the question is, why does it feel tight and hard? Pressure? Pressure, that's right. So there's pressure inside. So what makes pressure inside of drinks like this? What do you think? Carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide. That's interesting, isn't it? So they put carbon dioxide in drinks. Why do they put carbon dioxide in drinks anyways? What does it do for it? Fresh? What? To keep it fresh. Keeps it fresh and it makes it taste how? Good. Good and bubbly, right? Yeah, okay. So if you want Kool-Aid, does Kool-Aid have carbon dioxide in it? No. No, there's no fizzy and Kool-Aid. Here, now what we're going to do right here, here what, can you open that for me real slow? Now listen carefully. Keep going. Keep going. Did you hear that? Yeah. You hear that? The carbon dioxide. Right, the carbon dioxide was coming out of the liquid. Now that's interesting, isn't it? So let's take it all the way, all the way loose like that, okay? And we'll just leave the cap like, here, now, now, now feel that, feel that. Is it hard? No, it's squeezy. Look at that. You can squeeze it because we've done what? We've released the what? The pressure. We've released the pressure in there. That's interesting. Now, now carbon dioxide is very interesting and they put it in there under a lot of pressure. That's why it's so hard. Today we're talking about carbon dioxide. Do you know that water can have dissolved oxygen in it? Did you know that? Yeah. Well, this liquid had what? It had dissolved carbon dioxide in that liquid and it came out when we did what? Took the pressure off. That's interesting. So what we're going to do, hey, by the way, what do fish breathe? Yeah, through gills. They, breathe, they use gills. That's the organ. But in, and what do they breathe through the gills? What does the Carbon dioxide. Uh, no, but keep going. Oxygen. It's oxygen. Woo! That's right. So fish breathe oxygen. That's interesting. So where do they get the oxygen? Where do you think they get oxygen from? From the water. From the water. From the water. Now, sometimes we call water H what? H2O. H2O, that's right. So hydrogen is the H, right? H2, so we have two hydrogen atoms and we have oxygen. The O is what? Is oxygen. Do you think the fish breathe the O out of H2O? Yeah. Say no. No. no, they don't breathe the O out of H2O. They breathe dissolved oxygen in the water. How cool is that? It's really, hey, so let's go do an experiment about dissolved gases in liquids. So what we have right here, let me see, let me, let me put this down on the table. And I've got a, a fresh bottle right here. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to take this and I'm going to take can the I pressure off down? of this. Pardon me? You want to put this down? Yeah, we can put that down. All right, there we go. All right, I'm going to take this off of here, all right? And what I have right here, I've got some of these little candies right here. These are what? These are little candies. And in fact, let's see what we got right here. Here, here, you want one? And you can put that in your mouth or you can just feel it with your hands. And it feels very, very smooth, right? Okay, I don't want to touch it because these are clean. You got it? Okay, here we go. Feel how smooth that is in your hand. 
or maybe even in your mouth, but you don't have to put it in your mouth. If you, uh, you know. You want me to help? If you, Let me help. <laughs> yeah, why don't you do that? Okay. okay. Why don't you do that? I'll do that. Now, it feels smooth. Does it feel smooth? Okay, but you know what? Under a microscope, you know that the Mentos candy, it looks like the Rocky Mountains, and it's all jagged peaks of what? Sugar. 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 Okay, because candy's a lot of bunch of sugar. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to cause the carbon dioxide, we're going to cause it to what we call, it's called the nucleation point. It's a point where all of the carbon dioxide is going to try to get together in a real big hurry, and we're going to make a lot, a lot of pressure. So what I've got right here, see these? I've got my carbon, I've got my, my Mentos all lit up here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to screw that on, okay, so make sure I've got a enough room. We're going to screw this on my bottle, right? And I've got a magnet and a little bolt, and it's holding all of those Mentos so that they won't drop down into the liquid, right? So as soon as they drop down in the liquid, then the carbon dioxide is going to have a nucleation point, and, and all those molecules, okay, of carbon dioxide are going to rush together, and they're going to come out of the liquid. They're going to have a lot of pressure in here. So what we have is we have a drinking fountain, right? So here, so go ahead and grab a glass and just hold it just uh, just underneath okay and i'm and somebody's going to have to help me with this one over here hold it up a little more like that you got them like there okay we're going to give a countdown back, the countdown <laughs> goes three two and one i'm going to pull the magnet off the mentals are going to drop down in there we're going to have a soda fountain are you ready yes. all right okay countdown let's go three, three two, two one. one let's get this out of the way let's see whoa, whoa! How cool is that? Isn't that interesting? Yes. Yes. That's interesting. Now, did, do, did we do any work? No. Yeah, we did some work. We <laughs> filled those glasses up with a drink. Hey, let's have some more fun with this. Go ahead and put those down. So let's see what we've got right here. Let's check this thing out right here. Okay, let's see what we've got. So what I have, I'm going to turn this to the side. What I have is I've got a little toy car right here. We got some bottle, we got a bottle, and all we need to do is we've got to find the nucleation point. So look at all these Mentos that I have right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this right inside of this little chamber right here, yeah. right? And all I have to do is I have, to, if I let go of this little wire, then the Mentos are going to fall down and go right into our little soda bottle, right? What's gonna happen to the soda bottle car? It's gonna pop and go all Well, let's find out. Here, let's come on over here, and we're gonna set this little car down right about here. And I want you to stand. Can you stand about over oh, there? Okay, so we're gonna be able to see how this is going to work. Yeah, right, I do. Here, I here do. we go. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead. Let's see, I think I'm gonna point it this way. All right, I'm gonna tilt it up just about like this, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead, and I'm going to release the pressure, right? If you listen carefully, you might be able to hear it. Do you hear it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. All that is carbon dioxide leaving, okay? And we're going to put that over there. Thank good catch. All right. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to screw this down on my bottle right here. And then we're going to have another countdown. Remember the countdown? Yep. Here we go. Three, two, one. That's exactly right. Okay. Let's see. Let's get this in tighter and tighter and tighter. Okay. Here we go. And let's see. I think we want it to go that way, don't we? Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Sometimes you get a little bit wet yeah. doing this. No, don't catch it yet. All right. Here we go. So give me a countdown. Three, Three two, two, one. one. Let's sit it down. Here we go. Whoa, it went so fast and it turned over. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Cool. Hey, well, come back over here. Come back over here. Let's check our That was amazing. Right here. Did you see that? Yes. yes. Now, did we do any work? Yes. yes. We did some work, didn't we? No. Now, who do you think, who do you think put oxygen in water? God. God. That's right. But it's dissolved oxygen, isn't it? Now, how many have ever had a fish? Have you ever had a fish, a pet fish? Yes. What kind of fish did you have? Beta. A betta fish. Now, does a betta fish need oxygen? Yes. yes. It needs oxygen, doesn't it? You know, how about, you know, some fish need an aerator. They need uh, something that's going to put dissolved oxygen in the water because they need more oxygen in the water, right? Like yes. a lot of tropical fish need that. Mm -hmm. Interesting. But, you know, do fish just breathe the O out of the H2O? No. No, they breathe the what? The dissolved oxygen oxygen in the water and if you have if you have if you have a little uh, fish tank right and it has yeah, a surface yeah. on it, it has a surface on it well there's oxygen being do, being what 
oxygen is go, it goes into the water through that surface, right? And that's enough for betas, right? And it's enough for goldfish, but it's not enough for some of the tropical fish because they need a lot of dissolved oxygen in there. That's why you have to have an aerator, right? Something to put those little bubbles and dissolved oxygen in there. That is cool. Is that cool? Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. Hey, and you know, water is very important for us. We got to have a lot of water every day and we need a lot of oxygen every day too, don't we? Yeah. You know that most of the oxygen that we have comes from the, from the water. Did you know that? No. We've got a lot of plants that are in the water around the whole world and that's what releases oxygen into the air. And plus the trees that are around us and it's putting what? Oxygen back into the air. And God has done that all automatically. Isn't that cool? Yeah. We don't even have to think about that. How about that? Hey, did you like that little toy car? Yeah. yeah, it went so fast and it got out of control and went on its side. We had a little accident with that toy car. So what do we know about dissolved oxygen? Can it be in liquids? Yes. It sure can. And look, it all came out of that soda pop, isn't it? That... It reminds me of when God is talking about the breath of life. He is the breath of life and he gives us the air that we need and to breathe, right? Mm -hmm. I like that. Thank you. Let's that go is. head back inside. Wow, that was a lot of fun. Did you have fun with that one? Yeah. I never got to do the Mentos experiment quite like that. That was kind of a different way of doing that. Thank you. A little messy, I, wasn't it? It was messy, but at least we <laughs> didn't get our jackets dirty, so I'm thankful for that. No, that's good, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. So was it a chemical reaction or a physical reaction? I still think it's a it chemical. Was a, it was a, a physical. physical. It was a physical reaction, but everybody thinks it's a chemical reaction. But we didn't change things into something different, did we? No, mm -hmm. we didn't. That's interesting. And But we did something with that carbon dioxide gas. And what did we do with it? We let it out. We let it out really fast, didn't we? Yeah. That's right. And that's something that was called that nucleation, right? A nucleation. Those little candies, the little candies presented a nucleation point for the little tiny carbon dioxide molecule kills to gather around and they gather around by the thousands of them and created a tremendous amount of pressure and that's what we were seeing was a physical reaction wasn't chemical at all but most people are wrong <laughs> when they think it's a chemical reaction but you know better don't you how oh, that reminds me of a story about somebody that wasn't quite truthful almost like misleading mm. do you think of it, a story in the bible about that Yes, go ahead. Tell me, Nathan. Ananiram and Sapphira. Ananias and Sapphira. Would you please read Acts, I believe? Do you remember what verse was? It was five. Was it five? What? Four. Acts five. Acts four, five, four, verse eleven. four. Let's see. I want, let's, because remember, what were they doing? What were they doing in the story? They were selling. They, they, were, they said, oh, we yeah, sold on, everything of our land. They had money behind their back. And they were hiding it. <gasps> and what did Peter say? Can you read that for us? While it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your own control? Why have you been conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. We want to be truthful in everything that we do, right? Yeah, yeah they were misgiving. And sometimes things in science, I, yes, things appear. And you know, I have to remember a time when I was told that you know, d dinosaurs may have lived at a different time or didn't live or be before they didn't even exist, but now we know dinosaurs exist, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we know. And science may change, but whose word never changes no matter what? God. God. God's word never changes. His word, his, the Bible, is always true. We can always depend on God. Aren't you thankful for that? Yes. I am so thankful that we can depend on God and that we want His Word to live in our hearts and always be truthful. Yes. Do you agree? Yes. I surely want to live for Jesus. Don't you want to live for Jesus? Yes. And watch what we say mm -hmm. so we can see God's creation all around us because creation is science. science. Yay! Science. Bye. Bye.